What's up, Grind Squad? It's DG back again, and this time I'm coming to talk to you about something that's bothered me for a while. Now, I've done a lot of account takeovers, and I've helped a lot of people, and I've seen a lot of these accounts make the same mistake in the early to mid game, based off of some misconceptions they have about the heroes that they have in their roster. So I'm here to inform people, correct a few things, and give people the proper information they need to progress through the game. Now, this isn't to say that the information they're receiving is wrong, just the understanding of where it's applicable is. So, I'm going to touch on the builds, the different levels of them, and when they become appropriate for people to build. So if you like this video, make sure you tap that like, hit that subscribe, turn the notifications on, and help your boy out. Now let's hit that grind. So you have yourself a cold heart or royal guard. Now stop. Before you get too far and you start sinking resources into these champions, I want to do a little public service announcement. These heroes are great nukers. They can, they're really strong DPS champions in the later game. If you're early game or you have yet to establish your farmer, minotaur team, clan boss team, or even your dragon team, then these heroes might not be for you. Now. I do a lot of a lot of um, account takeovers and champion building and things like that over on my Twitch channel, link in the description. Um, and oftentimes I get on to I get on early to mid game players accounts and they have a royal guard and a cold hard six star and things like that, but they they can't properly build these champions to do what they've heard that they can do. Yes, they are they are really good damage dealers in the late game. But if you don't have the ability or the gear to properly build them, they're not going to do what you think they can do. They take, certain, they take certain builds, they take certain resources, and oftentimes they take certain team compositions to get them to properly work right. Now, as while building them early game, if you have yeast so far, if you've already done it, it's not exactly a waste of resources. Those early game resources could be better off used on a different champion that can help you progress through the early and mid game. There's other champions that I see like this, but Cold Heart and Royal Guard are the common ones that I see way too often, built way too early on people's accounts. Now, in this video, I am gonna go over their build options, and I like to put builds into tiers. I'll get to that later. Um, but you need to at least be able to hit minimum numbers before you start putting resources into these champions. So let's go ahead and get into it. I'll explain the builds and kind of show you the bare minimums and even the, you know, closer to the maximum build potential that these champions have. So let's go ahead and hop into it. All right, so we'll get into Coldheart first because she's one that I see way too often built way too early. Okay, so when it comes to Coldheart, there are two tiers to building her. Um, now I do have this level 41 here that I put on some very minimum gear to show you what it takes I have you know more in-game gear So it's quite easy for me to build a minimalistic cold heart when it comes to building a cold heart There are three stats that really really matter for her one is crit rate That is the one that makes sure that her enemy max HP skill um, Which is her a3 can can hit for some significant damage um Looking at her skill, her A3 is her important um, her important nuke skill. It attacks one enemy and decreases the turn meter by 100%. That's important, and I'll explain why in just a second. And has an extra 30% chance of inflicting critical hit. Damage increase according to max HP. This is the important this is the important um, aspect of these champions that I want to point out. Their damage is scaled off enemy max HP. So. Clan boss bosses, or I'm sorry, the clan boss, um, dungeon bosses, even faction war bosses, these skills can do massive amount of damage to them. But that the damage is kind of based off of two factors, the crit rate and the crit damage. If it doesn't crit, it's not going to do nearly as much damage as you think it is. So for that matter, we want 100% crit rate. Okay? But with Cold Heart, has an additional... 30% chance of inflicting critical hit. So you take the 100%, subtract the 30, you got 70. So the very first thing you wanna do when you're building a cold heart is ensure that you have 
70% crit rate. After that, the important factors is our crit damage. Now that's for damage. Now if we go back and look at her skill again, it decreases the target's turn meter by 100%. Now that is significant. That makes this skill not just a high damage dealing skill, but it also has some supportive mechanic to it. And it's quite important in most dungeons that, it, that she's in. To make sure that you decrease that target's turn meter, you need to make sure you get significant accuracy. Now, granted, this one doesn't quite have the accuracy that you would need for more in-game dungeons, um, but you need only about 150 to 100, 160 accuracy for around stage 15 to 16 of dungeons. Um, and yet, I have, you know, I have this is a cold heart that I haven't built yet. She hasn't been ascended, and I haven't put an accuracy banner on her. We'll get more into that here shortly. But I just want to show you the bare minimums of getting a cold heart to work. Now, since she only needs 70% accuracy, or I'm sorry, crit rate, and you come with an with an innate 15%, you only need to get 55% more to really make sure that she crits at 70% plus the additional 30, 100% crit rate. Five star crit rate gloves, and then the chest here has an additional 5%. It's really easy when you have later game gear, but early game gear getting five star crit rate gloves um, is difficult. And then on top of that, if you got a cold heart or royal guard, you have other champions that you want to crit, such as your farmer and things like that. Using your one or two really, you know, your best five star crit rate gloves on a cold heart that you may only use, may only use in one dungeon, not quite ideal. Plus, in the earlier dungeons, her skills scales off of enemy max HP. So in earlier dungeons, the, the campaign or the uh, dungeon boss doesn't have a larger amount of uh, enemy max HP. It isn't like you can get Cold Heart to hit for a million to a million five damage on stage 15 spider. Um, so keep that in mind. You're going to have to use, you know, some of your best crit rate gear to even reach the tier tier one baseline build for Cold Heart. Um, on top of that, you also need to acquire your accuracy and your speed and other things. Cold Heart and Royal Guard, they kind of have um, an intense stat requirement. Now, if we go back and look at the skill, it's based off of enemy max HP, but it's also based off of attack. Now, as while the player base doesn't have the exact um, split for these modifiers, we all have pretty much come to the conclusion that attack isn't that great. It, it doesn't scale that great with Cold Heart's skill. So, for the base build for Cold Heart, the tier 1 build for Cold Heart, crit rate gloves, and you want to go more sustained. She's quite squishy, she doesn't really come with a lot of built-in base stat sustain, so you want to go with something like HP or defense if you don't have a decent HP chest for her chest piece. After that, just like most heroes, you want to go with speed. Now. These are the three basic pieces for the tier one build. Other than that, you wanna, you know, use her, her top three pieces and her accessories to kind of um, support her, her sustained stats, her crit damage stats, her accuracy stats, things like that, speed of course. So this is the tier one build. Crit rate gloves, HP chest, speed boots, um, accuracy banner, crit damage necklace, um, or, or sustain necklace and ring now that's tier one cold heart only has two tiered uh tiered builds she has the the basic crit rate build like i showed you and then this build right here which i haven't overly built my cold hearts because i only use them in one dungeons the royal guards have more advanced builds i'll get to that shortly when it comes to the tier two build you switch it up from crit rate gloves to crit damage gloves you really want to stack up as much crit damage as you can and really get those nukes hitting as hard as they can. So besides the crit rate gloves, the next thing you go to is the chest. And again, she's quite a squishy hero. She takes certain, you know, certain sustained stats, sustained buffs in your team comp, and sometimes a full on reser to get through dungeons. So again, you go through HP, um, chest, and as always, you want the speed boots okay um now since we went crit damage gloves we have to really make sure 
that we get the crit rate, the 70% crit rate, which this one's at 79, from the substats. So you go crit, crit damage gloves, you get crit rate in the weapon, the helm, the shield, the chest, and even your boots if you have some. As you can tell, I definitely passed the 70% crit rate threshold, and that's pretty much all the requirements for her on that end. Now, this cold heart is built with an accuracy banner and has some accuracy substats in here to make sure that she hits that 200 to 220 ish plus accuracy needed for stage 20 dungeons. I got her at 185 speed. That's perfectly fine, uh, a perfectly good amount of speed if you're not doing, if you're not using more advanced techniques such as the double turn before the big spider that I'm sure a lot of people have seen. That requires more like 195 to 200 speed along with the appropriate amount of accuracy, crit rate, and crit damage. Are you seeing where I'm getting here? So when it comes to cold heart, you need speed, crit rate, crit damage, accuracy, plus you still have to stack on that sustain. This right here is evidence of how intense a cold heart build is. Now, when you get to end game, it becomes a lot easier with appropriate gear. You know, we have five, six star gear pieces here, plenty of speed sets, accuracy banner, crit damage gloves. We got crit rate in the substats, speed accuracy in the substats, all of that. It's a lot easier when you get to end game. And this at 230, 242 crit damage with the appropriate crit rate accuracy and some decent speed is the cold heart that you guys see okay but i'm an in-game player i have pretty decent gear and it, it becomes easier for me to acquire these numbers now if we go back and look at the other built cold heart with crit rate gloves we're only pumping out even if i put a, a crit damage necklace on it we're only putting out a hundred percent crit damage now that's not bad and that can help you get through some of the mid game stage dungeons but it's not going to do it's not going to have the impact that you guys are used to seeing other content creators put videos out on where they're doing massive damage and people tell you oh cold heart such a good dps so you really want to be weary on your crit rate crit damage even your accuracy and your speed again the cold heart and royal guard builds are pretty gear intensive now that should just about cover the gear and stat requirements for cold heart we'll go back up and look at my in-game built cold heart um, to get an idea of the masteries now there's two two ways that you can go with masteries here but they're pretty much both the same general structure i went down the offense tree and grabbed as much um, damage increasing skills as i could such as heart of glory single out bring it down, um, and then flawless execution for additional crit damage. Other than that, of course you want, to, you want the crit rate and crit damage masteries, um, and then I used the life drinker to a bridge over to the cycle of violence to help her reduce her cooldown on her big nuke skill for the one dungeon that I use her for, which is Fire Knight. Um, then we got Blood Shield. Blood Shield's whenever she kills a, a, an enemy, she uh, puts a little bit of a shield on top of herself and that's just to add with or sustain a little bit other than that I went with pinpoint accuracy charge focus swarm smiter um, To all help with her accuracy evil eye is a really good skill for cold heart whether it's fire knight whether it's spider um, For the turn meter reduction um, It's single target uh, her her a1 is uh, single target. I believe you correct. Let me not seem like a an Idiot here. No, it's it's four hit random um, so it might not reduce turn meter as much as a single target skill would. Um, but it still it still helps and it's still significant when you especially when you're running things like spider. Other than that, I got sniper to help with her heal reduction to make sure that her A1 always lands the heal reduction on the fire knight. Not so much needed if you're just gonna use her for spider, and the same for master hexer. But in general, these are the masteries that you're gonna pick for cold heart. So that, that about covers it with Cold Heart. We got our masteries, we got our stat requirements, and you know the, the tier one and tier two builds for her. Now let's go ahead and move up to the Royal Guard. I did change one of my Royal Guards because all three of my Royal Guards were in-game built, but I changed this one to kind of help show um, the gear requirements for the tier one build for Royal Guard. Now, technically, 
Virgo Guard has three different tier tier builds, but it's more like 2.5 because the, the tier two build can be built in two different ways, and I'll get to that in a minute. Just like uh, Cold Heart, uh, the tier one build is crit rate gloves, HP chest, and speed boots. Um, with the di with the difference in the stat requirements is based on his A2, which is his enemy max HP skill. Um, it's an AOE enemy max HP skill, um, but it doesn't have any additional crit rate involved. So you really want to max out and get that hundred as close to 100% crit rate as possible. Now he does have decreased defense and uh, uh, decreased speed with um, turn meter reduction on his A3. It's up to you whether you really want to utilize these um, these aspects of his kit or not to determine if you really want accuracy or not. Um, he, in my opinion, he doesn't do an overly great job at it, so I'd much rather sacrifice those components of his build, of his kit, to just maximize his damage. So looking at his stats here, I got 104% crit rate. Um, I didn't change out his whole build, I just changed out his gloves to show you crit rate gloves, HP chest, speed boots. Um, but you want that as close to or if not even over a hundred percent crit rate if you're gonna go against negative affinities which in the dungeons you shouldn't um, so that shouldn't be a big deal just straight hundred percent crit rate is solid um, and keep affinity in mind if you're gonna go like on spider 20 where it's spirit affinity he only actually needs 85 percent crit rate so keep that in mind depending on where you plan on using him other than that it's crit damage um, and speed per usual just like cold heart again i sacrificed accuracy to or i i didn't build accuracy and sacrifice the components of his kit that have to do with the debuffs i i have other heroes that that cover those in my comp so keep that in mind maybe you want accuracy for the decreased speed decreased defense turn meter reduction things like that it's up to you um and if that's the case then you throw on an accuracy banner throw some accuracy substats in there and in general you should be fine but i'd like to point out something that's different from cold heart on his a2 the attack is the first stat on the damage based on scaling part of the skill. And then it's enemy max HP. Granted, a good bulk of the damage from Royal Guard's uh, A2 comes from the enemy's max HP pool. But as you can as you can see, the attack goes first. The attack becomes a larger scaling stat than it did for Cold Heart. So you do kind of want to put some attack on him. Now this is the tier one build, so I went purely with crit rate, some crit damage, and sustain. That's why we have the crit rate gloves, the crit or the HP percent chest, and the speed boots, as well as HP on the ring and the banner. Now with his necklace to help increase that crit damage a little bit, we did go crit damage there, and and if I remember correctly, there's some crit damage in the subsets and some of the skills. Overall, we've got him at nearly 40,000 HP. That's decent sustain. 2500 attack, uh, 161 speed. For mid games dungeons, 161 speed's fine. Um, when I put him back in my end game build, he has more like 175, 180, um, which is a bare minimum that I need him for for the, the spider dungeon, which is the only dungeon I run him in currently. Um, so you really want to stack on that sustain to make sure he helps survive and build him with the appropriate amount of crit rate, crit damage, and speed. Okay, that's tier one build. So now looking at my more in-game built Royal Guard, I've got him in the tier three or tier 2.5 if you would, glass cannon build. For this build, and we'll get to the, to the in between the tier one and tier 2.5, we'll get to the tier two build here shortly. For this build, I went pure glass damage. I use him in a two turn quick nuke spider strategy. It's, it's how I got him built and it's perfectly fine. For the tier 2.5, the glass cannon variation build, crit damage gloves, attack percent chest, speed boots, and then I went attack on the ring and attack on the banner. I really wanted to bump up his attack as much as possible to help him scale with his A2. Then of course crit damage gloves. So looking at his stats here, um, I don't have to rely on, on sustain because my comp is built to take out the enemy as quickly as possible. I went, I got 4,200 attack, 187 speed, 86% crit, uh, crit rate, and that's because I use him in spirit spider dungeon. So I only need 85 because of the affinity advantage he has over the spirit spider. 
285% crit damage, that's very solid crit damage. And again, I didn't build accuracy because I sacrificed the um, decreased defense, decreased speed, and turn meter reduction of his kit. I don't personally need it, so I didn't need to build accuracy. I could just throw an accuracy banner on him, and he would land those debuffs and turn meter control in stage 20 dungeons. But I didn't need to do that, so I didn't. I want to, That's up to you to decide whether you need that or not. So this is the tier 2.5 or tier 3 build, if you would. Now, to give him the solid tier 2 build, this, this one requires a little bit more tweaking and fine tuning based on your needs in your comp and where you're running it. You could go just like Coldheart with a HP chest, um, HP ring, and an HP banner to give him solid sustain when you're running him in something more like Dragon or Ice Golem um, to help him survive the waves. But even then, if you're running someone like Arbiter or Korgorab or some kind of Rezzer, you could still go Glass Cannon. He would do his damage. The Rezzers would res him per wave or, you know, when they get to, when they get to the boss or whatever. Um, so really the only difference between the two, the tier two and the tier 2.5 or tier three build, whichever you prefer, is the fact that the tier 2.5 or tier three Glass Cannon build is pure attack DPS stats. And then the basic tier two is leaning a little more towards HP, which you could mix and match. You can have an attack chest with um, HP, banner, and ring. That's kind of up for you, you know, to tinker with and figure out what you like the best. Um, as far as masteries go, I went again with something that's that leans more towards pure damage. Crit rate, crit damage masteries, the heart of glory for extra damage when he's at full uh, HP. Um, then I went with whirlwind of death and ruthless amb ambush to increase his speed um, as he kills spiderlings and increases damage on that very first hit that he makes to help him again and kill spiderlings. Um, went down to the cycle of violence to really kind of bridge the gap but if I use him in another dungeon it could help him cool down his A2 which is an important skill. Went with kill streak so that way he gains more damage as he kills spiderlings or um, trash waves in other dungeons. Um, Blood Shield is really kind of to bridge over to the Flawless Execution um, for additional crit damage. But, and again, I'm in the way. Instead of the Flawless Execution, you could go Helm Smasher. Now, Helm Smasher, uh, when it procs, has a 50% chance to proc. It will do significantly more damage than the Flawless Execution build, but it's RNG based and it becomes more random. Since at the moment I only use him for Spider, I don't actually need the um, additional damage for Helm Smasher, so I go with something more consistent like Flawless Execution for the crit damage. That's kind of a personal choice and, the, and it's never been shown one's better than the other over time. The Helm Smasher will do more damage when it procs, but again, there's a percentage base there and it's RNG affected. Other than that, I went straight down for the accuracy um, to get Laura Steel to help increase his stats and Evil Eye to help him with turn meter reduction on his A1. Um, again, not necessarily needed for uh, the spider, uh, my spider comp, but if I did use him in other um, dungeons, then the, his debuffs and the turn meter reduction do come in handy. So that pretty much covers all of it for the Royal Guard builds. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off here. Again, remember the the main focus of this video is to stop early game to even mid game players from building these heroes too early, putting their resources into them when they can't properly build them and won't be able to fully utilize their kit until later in the end game. Um, if anyone else has any ideas or, or optional builds, um, or if I've missed anything in this in this video, please feel free to drop them down in the comments. Um, this is this is a topic that I've I've approached with a lot of people over in my Twitch channel when I'm doing account takeovers and champion builds that they build these heroes too early and don't have the proper resources to utilize them. Um, so all in all, I feel like that this covered you know the restrictions or requirements pretty well. And again guys really take a look at your 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 gear inventory and things like that to decide if if it's time for you to build them um these are great champions but there's been a misconception that you know they're really helpful to early to mid game players 
and that's really determined on how you can build them so all in all guys thank you for watching appreciate you guys being here um if you if you want to ask more questions or you need help from me feel free to come over and you know check out my twitch channel and you know feel you know ask questions and get you know catch my attention there but till next time guys happy grinding may the shards break in your favor peace